Okay, we're back, and we're doing some electromagnetic induction, uh, some Faraday's law, and we're going to focus on the case where the uh, magnetic field is constant, but the the loop, the circuit, whatever whatever you want to call it, is moving, and uh, the area is changing. So in this case, um, you know, one of the questions that you always want to ask is physically how and why does all this induction happen? How can you get a current to flow? Simply by moving a, a wire hoop or a metal hoop through a, a magnetic field. So Faraday says that as long as your magnetic flux is changing, a voltage is going to turn on and that means a current is going to turn on. In the lab we know that um, these wire hoops get hot, so it, you know that's evidence that there's a current flowing and so on. Um, now this particular case where the uh, the area changes and the magnetic field is constant is exactly how an electric generator works. Um, wire hoop spins around inside a magnetic field and that constantly changing flux <laughs> is ch causing a, a changing current, okay, an AC current to turn on. And that's, that's how we produce power at power plants. So. We have two main cases of, of how Faraday's law can work. One is where the area stays constant. Who just sits there and you move a magnet around? Okay, so the magnetic field is changing. In that case, the physical reason why a current turns on is that a circulating electric field turns on. And that's what goes into the wire hoop and that, that pushes electrons around and makes a current. But what about uh, the case where the magnetic field is constant? Okay, you don't have a, an induced electric field that turns on. There's got to be another reason. Okay, so that the reason is um, an old friend in magnetism, QV cross B. Yeah, a magnetic force is responsible for turning on the current. So here, here's a pretty standard sort of situation. And it's... Uh, well, we'll just kind of take it through. This is kind of how magnetic brake works. Um, you have a wire hoop, it's moving on the outside of, of a region where you have magnetic field. And uh, so initially you have no flux at all. Okay, so nothing happens. There's no voltage, there's no current, no forces, no nothing. Okay, but then if we move that loop forward a little bit, think about what happens when that front edge starts to enter the magnetic field. Now all of a sudden you have, uh, I'll show you in this region, where you have a region where you have magnetic flux. Okay, now it's still moving to the right. And uh, so you, you went from no flux to some amount of flux. And as, as you continue to move into that region, that area is changing. It's getting bigger where you have the flux. So that, that's a change in flux. That means an EMF is going to turn on and a current is going to turn on. So physically, think about what's happening here. That, that front edge there, that vertical edge, um, it's metal, it's a conductor. It has free electrons floating around inside there. So you, now you basically have moving charges inside a magnetic field. Which way is the force according to QV cross B? Well, if you do the right hand rule, the charges are moving to the right, the magnetic field is coming out of the page, and the right hand rule tells us that there's going to be a force on those on, on positive charges, if you're using the right hand rule, a force which is downwards. Okay, perpendicular to the velocity in the magnetic field. That's what starts the current. That's going to start a flow. And since you have a, a complete path here, that current is going to move around going clockwise. Now you could argue um, that uh, you know Lenz's law will tell you the same thing here, because you have an increasing flux that's coming out of the screen, and so if a current flows clockwise, that produces a magnetic field into the screen, and that tries to stop the flux from increasing. So Lenz's law gives the same answer, but physically, QV cross B is what we're doing. Okay. So let's see what happens here. 
According to Faraday's law, the induced voltage is the magnetic field times the change, the rate of change of the area in this case. Well, the area where we have flux is that rectangle that's shaded in there. So the, the width of that, maybe let's call it x, and the height on this picture is L. So x times L is the area. Well, the L side, if you're just moving horizontally, stays constant. So we have um, the rate of change of the width. Okay. Well, the xdt, another name for that is velocity. So whenever you have the case of a changing area, this is always going to be your end result for the EMF. The magnetic field times the length of one of the sides times how fast you're moving. Okay. Well, if that loop has some kind of resistance, the induced current from Ohm's law is just voltage divided by resistance. And so just in terms of just how many amps you have, I'm not going to worry about the minus sign. That's the expression that we have. And in this case, as long as your flux is changing as this loop enters the magnetic field, um, you're going to have a clockwise flow of the current. But now something interesting happens. <laughs> uh, this magnetic force that's caused by the, you know, the, this moving set of charges in the magnetic field um, is QB cross B. But now, and uh, clean up that picture a little bit, you now have a current inside the magnetic field, and that's going to produce a force. <laughs> so again, think of that front edge, okay, the right-hand right side of our loop. The current is going down through there. So now you have a current going down with the magnetic field coming out of the screen. And if you use the right-hand rule on that, and think in terms of IL cross B now. Um, that says we're going to produce a magnetic force on that front edge of the, the hoop going to the left. While the motion is to the right, this force that turns on because of this induced current goes to the left, and what it's trying to do is it's trying to break, it's trying to slow down the hoop. Okay? That fits in with Lenz's law. So basically you have, you have IL cross B going to the left. Okay, let's, let me clean that up. Um, this is the IL cross B force due to this induced current current's going down in that front front edge. Um, yeah, Lenz's law says this hoop's going to do everything in its power to stop the flux from increasing. So slowing down, if you can, if you can stop <laughs> and actually break uh, from moving, um, that stops the flux from changing altogether. And that would that would shut things down. Um, so all, all these weird effects are going on. Now what's more, let's uh, think of this a little more in depth, um, we know the current. Okay, we got that from using Faraday's law and Ohm's law. So it looks like if we plug that in for the, the current, we're going to have an, an L squared times magnetic field squared and velocity all over resistance. Now I've got the, the minus sign there because the force is opposite the velocity vector. Okay, it's the opposite direction. Well, your force, this is the net force acting on it, so that's MA. Now, we could try to figure out what happens with time. Okay, what's going on with your velocity as a function of time? And we can make a simple substitution, and in, instead of writing the acceleration, we can write it as its definition dv over dt. And all of a sudden, 
we can go ahead and, and solve for this. We can separate the variables and divide through by the mass and bring the dt up on the right hand side. Okay, And we can integrate this then. Okay, now time is going to go from zero when it first starts to enter the magnetic field, and you, however long you, you want this to happen. Um, Speed-wise, we're going from our initial speed to some final speed. So when you solve this, on the left-hand side, we're going to get natural log of v final over v initial. I'll let you do the algebra if you want. And over on the right-hand side, we just have all these constants multiplied by your time interval. Well, when you solve for that final speed, it's going to be your initial speed, and uh, we, we have to e both sides, so you have an exponential function. Okay, so your velocity, when you enter this thing, as a function of time, you start off at your initial speed, and it's going to decrease exponentially. Okay, so it's going to slow down. So as long as your flux is changing, this all this stuff is going to happen. Okay, so in summary, <coughs> the fact that you have metal moving through a magnetic field <coughs> means that QV kicks on, and that starts the current. That's that's the physically why this current flows in the first place. QV cross B. Once that induced current is flowing. You have a current inside the magnetic field, and IL cross B also kicks on. That's going to cause a breaking force. And that breaking force is going to start to try to slow you down. It's all time dependent, and so it's going to slow you down exponentially. So this is a pretty typical sort of situation. There's different ways you could draw the picture, but this is the gist of it. Um, Faraday's law when you have a change in area will always give you this, this BLV as your answer for the induced voltage. Okay, and then because everything depends on your velocity, it's kind of like an air friction sort of deal. Um, you have the same kind of mathematics and you get the same result. It's exponential. So I, I hope this helps. Um, it Obviously it gets a little bit involved and there, there's multiple concepts, multiple laws and rules that we're applying all at once together. Um, but this is the way nature works for this stuff. This is the weirdness of electromagnetic induction. So I hope it helps. Until next time, we'll see you later.